Wow, what's poppin' people? Another late night edition, man. On today's episode of Reaction Video, like no before with Ray GTV, man, we got your boy Freddie P, man. And he got a few things to say about his time at Bad Boys and how he really felt. You understand me? So we gonna let the boy speak, man. Freddie P, happy to have you on the platform, my man. What's happening, man? Happy to be here. <laughs> hey man, we finally got you on the platform, man. I've been trying to get you on the platform for a good minute now, man. Oh man, I'm, I'm glad we made it happen. I just be I, when I look in, I'll be telling people like, man, go ahead and hit Sean. You hit this guy right here, he gonna get it done. Cause you hit me, bro. I ain't man. I'm gonna talk circles, man. I'm, you know. Yeah, shout out to Sean, man, for making this happen, man. Cool dude. So before we get into the interview, refresh the audience memory on where they might know you from. Well, uh, I'm from um. I'm Freddie P, you know, from making the band, platinum um, group. I'm from Liberty City, Miami, Florida. I'm like one sixth of the band. I always been the one that was like, you know, standoffish, always the quiet one. You know how that be. You always got one in every group. Yeah, you was the quiet one that didn't care, man. You didn't care who Diddy was, man. But I got to ask you, speaking of Diddy, oh, how you feel man, about the oh. situation he going through right now? It was to to me to me honestly, and this ain't no slight. It's just I I like I like to see people get they do they just do. Like if he was innocent, I'd be speaking up. Like leave that man alone, cause I hate bullies. But if I feel like I don't feel like he's guilty, I just feel like bro, it's there. Like all all them people ain't lying, and then you know when a person lie because they going don't you know when a person lying they ain't going into to detail. Like it's certain things. And people always trying to blame Cassie, like, no, bro, like you ain't never been around a billionaire before, so you can't be around that. You don't know the, how to judge that situation when somebody like, it's kind of like the dude, you ever seen the commercial? They hold a daughter and you're like, you gotta be quicker than that. You got, they gonna keep dangling the money in your face. You gonna kiss like the carrot in front of the rabbit. You see the food, you gonna keep chasing it. And eventually you gonna feel like, why would I quit? And I done got to the 12th grade. Like who gets to the 12th grade and quit school? So if you go through so many levels of embarrassment, you know, whatever you, Rich, whatever you, whatever you want to call it, and then you get to where you feel like I'm, I surpassed a lot of stuff. I done did the worst of the worst. You go to feeling like, okay, I want to be compensated. But as um, far as his crib, man, I just feel like, man, um, they deserve it. You know what I'm saying? You see, he quiet. You got to look at the surroundings. Like people, are like why his friends ain't talking? Why? Woo, 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 woo. First of all, everybody know this been we we we've been talking about this shit since I was a kid. Everybody fucking know, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no sitting around to be acting like it's brand new right now. That shit irritates me. Even when I see niggas scared to speak up and all them niggas freaks, all and the when you see the ones speak up for them, it's because they got shit to hide, and they know when this shit come around on me or if this shit come around on me, I don't want to. I know I, you know I'm gonna be looking for. Alliances. I'm gonna be looking for people to step up for me. You get what I'm saying? What's crazy to me, man, is some of the names that's popping on. I see Harv. Y'all don't know who Harv Pierre is. I do. This a nigga who threatened, like me and this nigga done had real like words to words. Like me and them niggas done went through real. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like me and nigga, the nigga Diddy. You know what I'm saying? Nigga Diddy threatened me. He um because I'm the type of person like bro. You could if any you around me, bro, you gonna see. Bryce, anybody I'm around, they gonna be like, ask Fred to ask because he listen to you. Or I don't know what it is, bro. So it's like everybody around was like, I guess of some time walking on eggshells around me and shit. And I guess in some inst in some what he had to feel, he had to take back control of what his environment. Because when he got back in there, it was more like every time I'm I'm, I'm in the mood, Nick is like, and he was like, "Yo, Playboy, money. What you think?" Nick told me some shit about um. And and what's so crazy is if a Nick fat and you like this, right? You laugh at a nigga like, man, get your funny ass from by me, boy. I'm gonna shoot you in your, whoa, whoa, whoa. you know what I'm saying? This nigga threaten you, it hit different. You hear what I'm saying? Like, and I'm a gangster. Like, I done been in real sh real, I done seen it. I ain't got to talk about him. Just tell you, ain't nothing he can show me that I ain't seen. You get what I'm saying? So when he said this to me, uh, it hit a nerve. It was like, it was on some shit. like um one day I woke up I was in the mood I'm in the studio I'm snapping whatever I don't, I don't want to be with it. you know when you around a bunch of goofies you a street nigga sometimes you don't want to be around the nerds sometimes the nerds irritate you so 
So I'm in that bitch. I'm just, I'm just frustrated with a lot of shit that's going on. Anyway, we get in a situation. He go to, we in front of everybody. Nick like, um, he was like, man, money, um, man, what you think you bad or something? He was like, Nick, I buy every house on your block. Shut every light off on that bitch, and when you come out, every time you come out, that bitch you'll get popped. So when another nigga tell you some shit like that, you like, get your animated ass out of here, goofy ass. You feel what I'm saying? When he tell you some shit like that, you go to picture him purchasing every house. You go to picture every light on the block going off. And that shit silenced me. And for you to make that, people ask why I left the band. Like, that's why I left the band. Like, that's why I didn't do Dave Chappelle. Like, we got into that. My next time I got the chance to go home, because I, I had to, you know, you a gangster. It's like, you know, when you ain't got your gun on, you got to play it off sometime. So I had to play it off. I find, I, I tried to, man, listen, I don't even want to talk. It's because I, I don't know statute of limitations and stuff like that. But I tried to get his pussy out. You feel what I'm saying? Like, he ain't know he was threatened. He pretty, I'm pretty sure he know now. Nah. You know, he probably done been living in Miami long enough. He know now who he was threatened. He know how, I, how I'm rocking. But at that time, you know what I'm saying? He ain't know what my mind state was. I ain't got shit, bro. I ain't comfort shit. I will, I will be the one to put you on the news and me. You get what I'm saying? That's how I felt at that time. Like, boy, you threaten me? Like, niggas in the street don't threaten me. I'm going to war with real killers, and they ain't, they ain't, they ain't not there like this. You niggas, I know standing on business, and you? That's how I felt. Like, oh, I got to have you. And later on that night, I was trying to take his ass out. You feel me? Like, me and my dog, God rest his, little, his soul, we was in, like, a G-Wagon, and he had his little two-twos. I had a little pistol on me, whatever. I had the Mac, he had whatever, and we was waiting on his pussy to come out. Cause we had a meeting at, at one o'clock that night. So I had knew in my mind that, okay, we got into this earlier that day. So my time frame was, let me get back. So from like 11, no, we got out there like 1040 something. So from like 1040, so we had, first we had to do, a, you know, do a little homework or whatever, whatever. Make sure we could get right back to the West Side Highway cause it was like these little um, alleys and shit. So we had to do our homework cause out there, you got to make sure police ain't parked and walking around and standing on a block in Manhattan. So my mindset was different. It's dumb right now. And I'm glad I didn't because I probably would have died or got a prison sentence or something shit like that. But it's just how he had me feeling after the conversation. And, then, like, and he said some other shit. He was like, uh, he was like, uh, ah, somebody, he was like, what? He was like, Nick, he was like, you could walk out the studio right now. Somebody just walk up and pop you. He was like, I don't want to see you die or nothing like that, but nigga, in the knee or something. He was like, you better, he was basically like, you better control yourself. Like, you know, you better humble yourself. And I done been there. I know how it is when, when, when you were Apex and you had to talk with the big dog. He, he got a, you know, he, he probably ain't, he ain't really want to do that. Our relationship was different. You get what I'm saying? Like, I was quiet. He, he respected me. He never really disrespected me. I seen him disrespect. I seen him disrespect a lot of people. I seen him talk crazy to a lot of people. He had a lot of respect for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, when we hung out, we talked about thug shit. Like, you know, we hung out one time, we went out to a club, and he put me once in a, one on my own. You feel me? Like, um, he like, um, he bought me, I'm at the end of some couch, it's like a it's Dame Dash, just a bunch of motherfuckers just like dark as fuck. my type of environment, but it's quiet as fuck. everybody mind their own business. And it's like a horseshoe couch. And he at the top of that bitch with like eight bitches and shit. I done seen Puffy do some wild shit. I done seen Puffy like finger f bitches in the club, like in front of everybody. Like, I done seen Puff do some wild shit. I ain't never seen no man on man shit, but in my mind, I already knew what was going on around me. I just didn't know it was hard. I didn't, I didn't know it was certain nicks. And now when I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, he done got all of them. See, when, I, when I'm hearing what he offer, I'm like, oh, he done got them all. When you see all these rappers out here with this money popping up mysteriously and they looking like good investors and all that, no. Niggas on that Diddy package pan. You get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, you see niggas getting houses, niggas offering 20, 30 million dollars for your butthole, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. And I can understand most of them niggas, it, pause, no diddy. I, don't, I can't understand, but I can understand most niggas. Most niggas is weak. Most niggas ain't from that. You get what I'm saying? They only there to provide. Most niggas can get drunk and get took care of. Most niggas uh, without money could get slapped the fuck around in their hood. Like, without money, no nigga ever slapped me in my hood. Before you could go ask my ops, and them niggas don't like me to this day, but they gonna tell you one thing about him. That nigga ain't nothing to be played with, boy. He gonna get in. He, he gonna get it in. Don't let him. You feel me? But and I'm gonna get them they respect. You know what I'm saying? Like I know they stand on business. You feel me? It's just what real niggas do. But him, he gonna he gonna pick on weak niggas. He and he keep them. I I, I see the difference of the relationships he have with them. He he rather have, and I get it. Cause I like hanging with nerds. Like sometimes when you a gangster, you want to be around the, the cool nigga.
Like when you look at Jay, everybody was like, the nigga Jay Hood, it's a nigga from Chicago, he always talk about King Von. And they like, well, how these two niggas mix? Like, well, when you a nigga like Von, you want to be around the coolness. You don't want to be around the gangsters, the, 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 the fake thug niggas, because you know what you really about. You on 10. So a little minor, minor subject that this nigga might want to argue with somebody, your mind is, we finna go, I'm finna go jump in the car and take care of that, because it ain't even about the mind, the, man, the mind state don't come from wanting to be a killer and want to be a thug. It's come from paranoia and not wanting to get caught first. People think you like that because you just like that. No, you like that because you threaten my life. And now I take it more serious than everybody else. Like, I fear you might come. So I'm going to come get you on a way that you never seen before. Or I'm going to attempt to. Like, you know, not me. I'm just saying that's, why, that's, how, I would, would, <laughs> that's how I would handle it. <laughs> you know? Right, right. But... Yeah, just to backtrack, Diddy, he told you directly that he'll buy every house on your block, and every time somebody come out, they'll get shot. Hell yeah. He said, I'll shut every light off on that bitch. Now, picture that. You go to picture in it. It's him. you like, oh, this nigga can really do this shit. You hear me like, what the f***? Yeah, it ain't like no nigga in the hood. Man, trust me, man. Shit get put up. That was a different threat right there. That was a because you gotta understand the man got my social. The man got my itinerary. So all that fake, I would tell my son, you know, you're gonna live to be 42 if you pick and choose your battles wildly, not be the most gangster nigga in the room. Ain't no such thing as the baddest man in the world, because there's always somebody like your uncle or somebody like your daddy. And it's somebody that's ten times worse than us who ain't got a conscience, who don't care about God. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them niggas, man, all these rap niggas, they fruity to me, man. And I don't want to, you just look at it, bro. The whole list of them, all them brothers, all these moms, niggas, fruity, man. All them niggas was fruity the whole time. They knew it. When I hear when I hear certain rumors about certain niggas, I'm like, yeah, you can see it. For sure. So when you hear the gay rumors about Diddy, you're not surprised? I always tell people this. I've been telling people this. Don't forget the gangster. He, he got a lot of licious in him now. He, he gangster licious. But don't forget the gangster part. The bitch still a gangster now. You hear me? Regardless about every whatever de def definition you want to describe a gangster as, whether it be a mob boss, a hit, a hit, call, a shot call, or whatever, the bitch get it done and he'll get it done. That's that's evidence that he'll get it done. And and the bitch are fed. You get what I'm saying? So he ain't not. Don't you see niggas conducting themselves like that and caring about like that because they're not worried about doing no time. It's a federal agent. He know he been an agent. He know that. That man working, man. That man not worried about going to jail. That man just got a hand shit over. He on, he's a, he got a handler, man. That man, if anybody who can't see that puppy is a fucking agent, the man been dodging jail. And he's a scary nigga that can't take jail. He shows you that by sacrificing niggas up on him. That's like a nigga saying, no, 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 I can't go. He got claustrophobic. It give him claustrophobic. So imagine what he'll do to stay the fuck up out of there. Yeah, he gonna sit in the DA office. Plus he trying to prove to these people that he's a civilized He's a productive uh, citizen now. He's not no thug. People got to understand what he went through at that time. What he went through at that time, you know, he had a different perception when he was shooting guns in the club, and he almost lost a lot. Nobody want to fuck with him. Nobody want to touch him. We, 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 we. I look at Mace, everybody. It don't matter who it is. He ain't make more money with, with them than he made with the band brand. And Mace, my, I love Mace Dell. That's a cool nigga. That nigga called me when I was fucked up. That nigga gave me a call that inspired me, bro, when I was really down. Mace, the only nigga called me. Did he feel like he's above the world, but God just reminded him who really runs shit. See, the devil, what Diddy was thinking all these years was, oh, man, I'm this and that. That's what the devil do. He parades you around. You don't know he there until he actually deserts you. See, the whole time, you thinking you got the power. You thinking you did this. Ooh, I'm I can't be stopped. Watch all the videos. You thinking you the whole time. It's your God. He parading you around. Because when I get ready to drop you, I'm going to parade you in front of the same crowd that I'm going to make you look bad for. You look good for 40 years. I hope you enjoyed those good days. However, the 20 years, whatever it been, I paraded you around for 20 years just to drop you from 25 feet. That's basically what the devil did to him. He left him deserted. He used him and abused him. Built this, built this, uh, this, uh, Track record, built the nasty shit, built, made them feel untouchable. I got you, you good. Nobody could bother you. The power kept growing, ego kept growing, kept building luggage, kept building luggage, kept building luggage. And guess what the devil do? I'm through with you. There's nothing you can do for me no more.
I'm gone. I'm on to the next. Now you in front of your people. They calling you no diddy. You going, your son's like, I'm talking about after you die, your son's still finna feel this. Your grandkids gonna feel this. You gonna be having fucking stories told about you as if you're the boogeyman because you were. You were. You robbed people, bro. Like, you, 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 you got no talent. You robbed people, bro. Like, I don't care what nobody... Oh, Diddy picked the... T Best thing Diddy ever did, I can't lie to you. He made me work harder. That was not, that was not, not more than what a drill sergeant would do. He just, you know, no, nah, write, write more. Write three verses to it. You didn't write it for me. You just turned me into an animal. You, you get credit for turning me, for making me channel to another level. Then, yeah, I gave you that. But it was in me already. You just showed me how to channel it. Now, you talk about, uh, we talk about actual greatness. Like, what are you doing? Like, what are you, what did you write? Like, what did you, what did you bring besides finding the talent? Anybody could have done your job is all I'm saying. You were replaceable. You were, anybody could have done what you done. Anybody with morals, hip hop would be in a different state of different state if it was anybody. If it was Ice Cube handed those keys, it would be a different state right now. It wouldn't have been no shiny. He introduced the homophobia to the to our game. We wasn't like you know we was hardcore. He got paid to do that. The agenda started with him. Everything you see going on right now was puffy from the flamey suits, the colorful outfit, because he knew what Clive was doing to him. He was trying to make it acceptable. So. Man, I'm pretty sure I don't heard stories about them all. Mary J. All of them got real rough up stories about this man, like, and they can never tell, like, you know what I'm saying? That I know, cause I've been in the circles. I've been, I know, you can't hide it from me. I just, I'm a gangster. I can't, you know, I never sit on, sit on the stand and tell no judge nothing about you, nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? It's just I know, like, you, 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 you's a whole, he's a whole bitch. Like, he, he's a, he's a, he's an evil motherfucker, but he only do it because he got the money. And I tell people, if Puffy had to live like me, he'd be dead by now. You get what I'm saying? If Puffy came from my environment, off my block, and he did, things weren't handed to him, he'd be dead by now. That's how I look at him. You're a cold pussy. You know that, right? You could, If me and the roles were reversed, I'd be a god, and you'd be fucking dead by now. So that's why I don't feel like I'm 100% more man than you, because I survived in worse conditions than you. I didn't have anything handed to me. You can't even fucking do fucking three months in jail, bro. You'll lose your fucking mind, bro. He ain't got, he, ain't, he can't survive in no fucking jail, bro. Niggas is, uh, he, uh, niggas talk about, he'll be a boss, he'll be this, they gonna isolate that nigga. Ain't no boss, he gonna be cutting a check like he doing now. Cutting a check for safety. The moment he feel like he's a man and he can't, niggas is gonna go right up in him, three fingers at. That's real talk. But I got to ask you, the cheesecake situation, was that real? He really made y'all do all that walking for a cheesecake? Yeah, it came, it came, it came, with, it came with resistance. It came with, it came with reluctance, but we, we were very reluctant, but um, we did it. Because like I say, man, people got to understand at that time, we hadn't did so much, man, waking up six in the morning, training, you know, walk, um, walking around Brooklyn, screaming Biggie lyrics at six in the morning, just feeding the homeless, washing Swiss Beats car, washing cars, all type of shit. Yeah, we had to do so much initiation, kind of like getting to the twelfth grade and quitting. And that's why I felt Cassie is like, I done did all this. Okay, well, I'm close to where I should be. You get what I'm saying? And that's how he dangled it around in front of you. That's how he got you. He always make you feel like. It's right here. You don't want to leave the situation because if you leave it, you don't have nothing saved, nothing, nothing. Everything you've done, you might as well keep going just to get something from it because everything you've done so far falls on death doors. There's nothing coming from it. You done had orgies and everything. You done did everything to please this man and show him you love him. And truthfully, you see he's selfish. I mean, any person that love you ain't finna share you. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Ooh, that person don't love you, man. Oh, yo, yo, your nigga don't love you. Your nigga selfish. Your nigga using you when girls like, oh, I'm threesome with my nigga. That nigga never had bitches before. That nigga used his bitch to get bitches because he never had a threesome before. A nigga who got bitches since high school, one time I got chased out of school because I'm bow legged or whatever they like about me. I got chased out of school when I first walked in that bitch by the baddest bitch in the school. Why not smash anything online? Go ask everybody about Shanika Lawrence. Go ask everybody about me and Shanika Lawrence. And, you know, she was that bitch in high school. She was her. 
and I had her. And then after her, it was every girl who was her. In my life, like, I had them. You know what I'm saying? Keisha Cole, I knew Keisha Fosha. Yeah, I ain't going to get into all that Keisha. I think I took her to the awards. I had Chopper kicked out or some shit like that when we was younger, and she was crying or whatever, whatever. I took her to the awards with me. Before she was famous, I think she used to drive like a green little Lexus or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? She pulled up in a limo. I had a, She was my company. You get what I'm saying? There's a lot of, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of shit. Man, Nick be just talking on real gangsters, on, you know? Bro, he had y'all watching Swiss Beats cars? Hell yeah. Nick, we watched Swiss Beats car. You see how I said that shit? We did it. Man, we had to learn, we had to learn Biggie every word. I don't know why we did it. I guess it was good TV. You know what I'm saying? A lot of stuff was for good TV. And that's what happened. Like, well, That's why people don't understand. Like me and Puff, the reason Puff don't like me, I'm the only one Puff never spoke to since the band. Like, But one time, like probably twice. But it's because like, I don't know if it's, you know, like it was back in the day, somebody used to say something. Like, I don't know if it was like, you know, something they used to sell amongst each other, but uh, somebody who worked that bad boy came and told me, like, they was like, man, they was like, boy, that nigga would come to, come to New York, and he ain't in the studio, boy, we shut the studio, don't let that nigga in the studio. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't know what's on his mind. Ooh, ooh. I guess, they, you know what I'm saying? They like, you come to, <laughs> you come to New York. <laughs> and they used to think I was crazy, man. I had the MTV lawyer scared to meet me, and she, she used to be in the building with me, because they were fucking us over, bro. And they'll see me on camera reacting to it, and now those people don't want to meet me. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Dave Chappelle, I was on the couch with Dave. I got a picture. It was me, Dave. I was on the couch with Dave when he came up with that. Dave didn't think of that. He, he, he acted that out that day. When he asked us to come on the show, it was me, him, Red Man, Ja Rule, or somebody else. We were smoking on the couch inside of a party. It was, like, just chilling. And he was telling us about his favorites, and we laughing, we joking. And, and he was like, man, I want to do it, man. He don't know I'm trying to get home, bitch. If I go home, I ain't never coming back, Dave. But I seen it as God. I'm like, why this nigga? I said, because I'm plotting already. I already know my ticket Monday. My ticket Monday. I mean, Sunday. I'm gone. I know I ain't coming back because the nigga threatened me. So I'm like, damn, why Dave want to do this shit right now? Because I really wanted to do this shit. But I'm like, boy, when I go home, I know I ain't coming back. I ain't coming back. And that's why that's the only reason I wasn't on Dave Chappelle. They tried to ruin me so bad, bro. If Dave Chappelle reacted me, they wouldn't even let him drop it. You seen how he did Dalon? Dalon wasn't up, but they let him do it. He reacted me, they wouldn't even let him drop it. Third season, like if you go back and listen to the old music, every song that I rapped on, they replaced it with like a techno beat to make me sound bad. They was killing my brand, shit like that, trying to make me sound off. But it was too late. Like people already knew what I was capable of, knew what I was made of. Like a lot of things, like it's self explanatory. Like you could tell, like, one of the reasons I knew Puffy didn't really fuck with me, like he didn't like me, like that's what I knew. He could have changed my life. Bad Boy Two soundtrack. I got a song on there. It's called um, "The Devil Keep On Fuck With Me." That's my song. I used to walk out the street singing that song before it even had a hook, a beat. Before I even met Puffy, just somebody used to just say, four in the morning, walk up with a pistol from the stove for my brother get him Duchess like that. So I used to scream this loud. That song that why the devil keep on fucking with me. This is something I just, just, just chant. But anyway, long story short, in the movie, it's a part where they're having a shootout. And you see him going around the wall, and the Haitian standing there. He go around the wall, and he say, And the devil's in my house. And that's what he said, Oh, my God. The nigga put Nelly's song in that bitch 12 times. I knew the nigga was good. I knew something was funny about that shit. Yeah, you know, he wrote the song. This nigga not like Nelly or something, but, but he literally could have put me in that movie, and that song was on the soundtrack and it fitted the scene. Why the devil keep on fucking with me? And he talk about why the who let the devil in my house? Boom, 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 whatever the Jared was saying, the hatred was saying when they was having a shootout in, in Bad Boy too. But I knew right then. I said, oh, yeah, this nigga, yeah, this selfish nigga. You feel me? I knew it. Most Scorpio niggas like that though. The ones in November, not October niggas. Them niggas. October women and Scorpio women in October niggas is cool, but them November niggas is different. I do not get it. My son one. And we love each other to death, nigga, but if he wasn't my son, we'll be hitting here. Yes, that. 
Yeah, that was your boy, Freddie P, man. Yeah, 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 the boy, the boy, the boy spoke his mind. Yeah, the boy spoke his mind, man. How you really feel? That's how you really feel. Boy spoke his mind, got it off his chest, you understand? Know you know, you gotta respect it. You feel me? But yeah, man, really chopping it up about, um, you know how it was for him, man. How they bumped heads and shit like that, so. I know eventually, um, everybody gonna speak. You know what I'm saying? Eventually. You understand? But, uh, yeah, it was a dope interview, man. I put it all together because I ain't want no short videos, so I'm like, fuck that. At least. Try to, you know what I'm saying? Like, Gotta be longer than 10 minutes at least, man. Fucking short videos and shit. I ain't really trying to fuck with them like that. I wait and put everything together before I do that. But yeah, man, that was it for today's episode with that. A reaction video like never before with Reggie TV, man. That was Freddie P for making a motherfucking band. And it's the late night hours, man. Warm coffee and cigarettes, ho. All good moves must come to an end. Roll the credits.